So I was reading the news yesterday and anyone who watches the channel knows oh when there's a news videos wow it's time for the spicy hot takes let's get out those pitchforks bust out those torches it's time to get angry and the reddit mob ready yeah except i can't really be angry you know i i've actually looked at this at this story and i'm sure there's actually many more undocumented stories like it um and i think the premise is easy to understand but i'm not, honestly not shocked at all but first <laughs> wait 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 no 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 come back it's it's not a sponsor i i typically try to link the original article um but not this time i have sufficient evidence that uh the 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 google beast scans all of the links in the description for incriminating keywords and Given what exactly what is in the title, I am afraid of what Google will do to me. And the because this article from the New York Times, there's a QR code on my right, and uh, this contains the original article. And I can't talk about it on YouTube, and I can't actually link it here. It's in, it'll be embedded in an, within another article that in the description um, because this article contains the N word. Stop right there, criminal scum! Oh, no, 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 not that N-word. Uh, this one, according to, uh, to Google, is much worse. Especially when you put it in the context of children. And of course, the article that I'm talking about is this article. Uh, this article from the New York Times. A dad took photos of his N-word toddler. <laughs> Google flagged him as a criminal. And obviously, you know, when, when someone is critical of critical of Google, I try to be very careful. Um, but the wording the New York Times used here, you, I have to resort to such crude techniques. Yes, Mark noticed something was amiss with his toddler. His son's popsicle. Yes, that totally looks swollen and was hurting him. And I think where you can start to see where this is going. Mark, a stay-at-home dad in San Francisco, grabbed his Android smartphone and took photos to document the problem so he could track its progress, you know, because his he had problem his son had problems with his popsicle. I'm trying to collect things here. Okay, so let's I'm not going to read the whole article. I'm not going to waste your time. Let's go through some key takeaways of this article. Key takeaway number 1, all right? Uh this guy got his Google account deleted because a doctor explicitly asked for medical photos of his son's popsicle. Number 2. Google determined that said photos were set were uh CSAM content. I can't say the other word, else YouTube will get angry. Uh and banned his account. And then also, not only did they ban his account, they tattled to law enforcement. Uh, I love you know, only the best thing you can do. Then number three, the police determined, rightfully so, uh, that this guy was innocent. <laughs> but Google still won't restore his account after deleting all of his stuff. <laughs> number four. <laughs> Google can and will scan everything in your account and anything that is against their rules and by their determination, of course, may result in a permanent ban from the Google ecosystem, whether you do it on YouTube or Google Drive, Google Photos, what, what, Google Search, whatever you do and they don't like it, they have the ability to ban your account. The surprising part here I found is that a lot of these articles contain uh, legitimate victims, right? Um, but that's not the only thing these articles contain. These articles that I'm seeing spawn up just because of this New York Times article are also annoying journalists who complain all the time and don't provide normal people a real solution. And that's what makes me angry. I cannot stand it when news websites tell people all the terrible things that are happening in the world and fail to provide people a concrete solution on what they can do about it. If you can't do anything about it, it is not worth your time. I want to propose a solution, you know, like a real solution. Uh, instead of, you know, everyone is like, oh, we need, we need laws. And of course, laws would help. But again, it takes time for laws to pass. What are we going to do in the meantime? Or uh, what if, what if I pray to Daddy Sundar to fix the problem? Uh, that might, but that's going to also take time. What if he doesn't listen to you because Daddy Sundar is too busy working on the new glasses, right? We need to uh, take measures to protect ourselves now proactively rather than waiting on government 
and journalists and companies to do this job for us. We need to do it ourselves. And the solution that I propose is the program Cryptomator. Cryptomator encrypts your files by using bulk encrypting files in your computer. And it also accepts the convenience that the user is actually going to store their files in an inherently unsafe place, right? So that way, and by inherently unsafe place, they mean, of course, your favorite cloud service. The idea is when you upload files to a cloud service, in the case of Mark, he uploaded his photos to Google Drive, right? Um, but in the scenario that, uh, but this scenario could also be applied to lots of other cloud storage platforms. For example, what if you're uploading files to iCloud, right? Because you have an iCloud account. What if you're uploading files to Dropbox? or OneDrive, or uh, Mega. This this solution, while Cryptomator can be applied to Google Drive, you can also take it so that it can be applied to other cloud services. And that's where Cryptomator sort of gets its claim to fame. You encrypt them on your computer first, or in a synced folder where you, know, you would sync things to Dropbox or Google Drive, right? And then all of that gets beamed up into the cloud uh, for, uh, and is unable to be read. And the point of this is when files get encrypted right that means the purse the people in the cloud can't read your files because we all know as tech savvy people that the cloud is just other people's computers so even on their uh on their little page here so if you go to their open source page because yes as we know uh good programs are all open source for the sake of transparency right uh we, if you go to their section here about open source right and you scroll down to the bottom here you can actually get this pdf right and this is a pdf describing uh an audit of their crypto library by the illustrious german auditing firm cure cure 53. so if you read through this this is actually just an audit of their cryptography libraries so and by all intents of standards if you go to uh, the conclusion that they have at the bottom of the paper here uh cure 53 says that the the base mathematics behind cryptomaters cryptography is very secure right uh they but no one has actually audited the actual programs themselves and hopefully that you know probably that'll be done in the future um but for purposes of cryptomater the cryptography itself is what's more important because these are files that are being stored on other people's computers on safe environments and this makes it so that when you you upload your files to Google Drive or iCloud or Dropbox or OneDrive, you know that your files can't be read by someone else on the other end, right? And you're not going to fall victim to uh, uploading files like Mark did, right? And that's that's the beauty of using something like Cryptomator. Now, I need to give another disclaimer, okay? Nope, this one's not a sponsor this time, okay? I'm not another I'm not a sponsor, okay? Uh, to, to be perfectly clear, okay, I do not condone illegal activity. If you do something illegal, I am not responsible. I need to say this, or else Susan is going to ban me for promoting illegal activity. I am a lawful sheep. I mean citizen. And no company is going to go to jail for you because they'll turn you over in a heartbeat. And I'm not going to go to jail for you either, all right? So that out of the way, going to be demonstrating the following in my Google Drive account because uh, Cryptomator actually has integration with all the software, but I'm not going to be showing that for the purposes of this video. It's kind of boring. Uh, if you, if you, I'm not going to show you how to set up Dropbox, or whatever. I'm sure you can figure out how to do that yourself. If normal people, if normal people can figure out how to set up Dropbox or what or iCloud, I'm sure you can too. So first things first, go back to the open source page here. How do you actually go to download Cryptomator? So if you go here, click on the downloads button, and then you'll get here, right? Um, now, if you're on Windows, you can use Chocolatey. That's what you should use, okay? If you're on Mac, you should use Homebrew. And uh, if you're on Linux, um, I have attempted to use the Flatpak, but the Flatpak appears to be broken. Uh, when I tried using the flat pack, uh, you can't mount your actual encrypted folder, so it's completely worthless. Uh, instead, just use the app image. I've actually had no problems using the app image, um, and I've also used the AUR version in the past. I mean, you be it's the AUR version is actually maintained by the Cryptomator developers, so be worth a shot. And there's also a PPA if you're on Ubuntu. So it's that out of the way. Uh, I'm gonna go give Cryptomator good old launch. So I actually have a folder here. This is where I have the app image. And I'm just going to give it a good old run. Give it a moment. So Cryptomator is actually written in Java, which means it's a memory-safe language, right? And that's always a plus. I love memory-safe languages. 
always applaud people for using memory safe languages. And this is the kind of window that pop up because I'm tiling windows right now. It's actually floating, it's supposed to be floating. It usually looks something like this, right? It's usually really tiny. So I'm just going to move it over here for now. So if you actually use Cryptomator, it's going to, a little floating window is going to pop up like this. And this is what you're going to see, right? So, uh, it's pretty simple, um, but as we all know, right, when, when we download a program, the first thing we want to do is we want to go over to the gears and this menu is going to pop up. And then what we're going to do is uh, we're going to go to interface and we're going to end the cancer that is, wait, what? You have to unlock dark mode. What does this mean? <laughs> right? Support CryptoMator and receive a supporter certificate. Ah, uh, no, this is where I need to discuss something because normally I think people will get angry over this, but I'm actually good, happy about this. Yes, that's right. Dark mode is a gated feature. Wait, no, nope, don't click off of the video before anyone complains. Uh, I want to say this is how you support the project. You might think, oh, I have to pay money to be a supporter certificate. Believe it or not, you might not actually have to pay money to get a supporter certificate. So if you click on the link, it's on the it's on the CryptoMator thing right here. If you see this link right here, uh, and then you go to their website, you'll see here the first thing is like, oh, I need to give I need to give them money, right? And uh, no, you don't actually have to give them money. Um, but what you can do also do is you can actually implement, try to uh, implement features or fix bugs in CryptoMator. So if you report bugs on CryptoMator and you provide your handle for their on GitHub because they can tie that in with their GitHub repo, they can fix problems with the thing. Uh, that'll get you some brownie points of CryptoMator. And then you can also be a translator. So on Crowdin, so if you translate CryptoMator, uh, that'll also get you a thing. Uh, you can also be an influencer. And this is the hilarious part. Part. Once this video is uploaded, I will post the link to this video and I will get dark mode for free. I love it. And then you can also support, uh, just support in other ways. I, I don't actually know what this means. I'm pretty sure. I, I hope, I hope no one spams them with this or whatever. But in any event, uh, this is, this is what you can do to unlock dark mode of CryptoMator and it makes the project better, right? And as proof of the translator option, right? If you hop back to CryptoMator here and we go back to the interface, you can see language here requires a restart and then you open this and then there's this long list of all these languages. And it's like, that's because people want their dark mode that badly and you should support this project because they do a great job. So that's first thing, settings me out of the way. All right, so second thing. Second thing is going to be uh, updates, right? If you're on uh, Windows, don't worry about this. If you download it through Chocolaty, don't worry about this. But if you downloaded the installer from their website, you need to enable automatic updates, right? You should always enable automatic updates. I have no idea why they don't enable this by default, but whatever. Um, if you're using the Flatpak on Linux, when it works again, uh, you probably don't need to enable this either. However, if you were like me, you are stuck using the app image. And as you can see in my GNOME title menu here, it's just like a bunch of random nonsense. It doesn't mean anything. Um, if you, you want to check that box and make sure automatic updates are enabled. And if you're on Mac because, and you would install this through Homebrew, or if you installed it from their website, you need to check automatic updates because the Homebrew version downloads a Homebrew cask. So it's not going to keep, Homebrew isn't going to keep you up to date. So you want to have CryptoMator independently checked for updates. Okay, so make sure you check for updates. Okay, it's important. And that's pretty much that. Um, you can also, I mean, you can also do stuff like if you want to enable a tray icon, um, but I think tray icons are horrid and annoying. I'm looking at you, OBS, but whatever. I will close, close this for now. So uh, I will show you guys how you can create your own CryptoMator vault, okay? And creating your own CryptoMator vault is actually uh, pretty easy. And uh, let's, let's just go through that right now. So uh number one right it goes to the bottom here see at the bottom heck there's look, there's even a nice little arrow it tells you to do it click on add vault okay and then you get a pop window that looks a little bit like this and it's gonna say here uh you want to either create a new vault or open an existing vault so i'll click create a new vault because i haven't created a vault yet so I'll click create new vault and then they're gonna ask you for a vault name and uh for the vault name i'm just gonna write go away google okay you can name this whatever you want just make it memorable okay so you know what it is and then I'll click next. And then uh, if you want to use a custom location, so, you know, if you have like a USB drive or if you're going to be putting this into whatever, uh, like Google Drive or Mega, right? That kind of deal. You can choose custom location. You can actually pick one. You'll see the default here. It's actually in my home folder. So this is, you know, like the folder where you store all of your like 
you know, all of your my documents or whatever, that sort of thing, right? Um, and I think that's fine for my purposes, but uh, you want to select a different folder if you're using something like, I don't know, like iCloud or Dropbox, right? So click next, and then it will be prompted to enter in a password. So please, I, I beg you, please make this password a good password. And you need to make this as long as you possibly can, as long as your brain can allow for. Uh, but if you don't want to do that, you could just use a password manager. Using password manager is so much easier. <laughs> anyway. Uh, I'm going to type in a password, and of course, uh, because the minimum is eight characters, I'm typing in a password that begins with P that is eight characters long and is totally not password, right? So next, you, they'll ask, you'll say here, you won't be able to access your data without your password. Do you want a recovery key in case you lose your password? And I am a try, I am a diehard. I don't care. I value my privacy. I say, yes, please. Better the, I would say no. <laughs> if it were up to me, I would say no thanks. I will not use my password. Um, but there's also the option, yes, please, better be safe than sorry. I'm just going to check for the purposes of this video. Yes, please, better be safe than sorry, right? And to, to in defense of them, uh, you know, this matters, especially when you're storing it on the cloud. They're definitely not going to have access to this as long as you don't upload this to the cloud too. I don't recommend that. Uh, you know, you want to keep this offline, uh, offline or whatever. So you click create vault and you'll see a seed phrase here, which is actually really similar to uh, what you'd see in like, you know, when you're making a Bitcoin wallet or something, right? And you'll see, and what you'll see is like, it's a bunch of random, it's like 40 random letters. Okay. So write it down on a piece of paper, print it out, use your password manager, save it on like external storage and do what you have to do to make sure this is ready when you need it. Right. Make, you make sure this is safe. If you lose data while you're doing this, I cannot be held responsible and they cannot recover your data unless you write down this key. So please be careful. So I'm go I got my key down. I'm gonna click next. Now I've added a vault. Go I've added my vault. Go away, Google. And you can unlock this vault to add or access its contents. And you can access it at any later point. So I'm just gonna choose to unlock it right now. And you'll see it actually adds them in a little menu right here in the application. And you can just double click on this to access it. And it's gonna ask you for the password. So I'm gonna enter in my eight character P letter password. And then boom, the, app, the vault can now be accessed from its mount point. And if you click on reveal drive, you, this folder pops up and then you actually get this big folder here. And this, consider this like a secure folder. You can upload files here and it's very safe. And they even have this nice, very welcoming RTF document here telling you all about this. This encrypted volume, this is your vault's access location. Any files added to this volume will be encrypted by Cryptomator. This is only the decrypted content. So the files will stay encrypted as long as Cryptomator is, will stay encrypted when Cryptomator is not running, when you upload the cloud storage. And it, this part of is only decrypted when you need to add files to it, right? So feel free to remove this file. Oh, thank you for telling me. I'll just go remove the file. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Treat this folder kind of like you would like a secure folder. And I think a little... And the one disadvantage of this is it's arguably a little cumbersome, but in order to actually get to this folder, I mean, you could try to copy it like you're on Windows or Linux. It's actually pretty easy. You can copy the path that's at the top right here. Um, if you're on Mac, I don't even know how to do this. I'm sorry. Uh, you have to like, it's a little pain. It's just painful on Mac, the copy paths. But uh, I mean, as long as you know your mount point, that's the folder where you would go. And that's where you can actually go to save stuff. Here I have a picture of generated by AI of a caveman, of a caveman typing in a computer. Right? I, I, I'm sure I'd find a use for this sometime in here, but I can't think of one right now. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to upload this PNG file here. And I'm actually going to upload it to my Cryptomator storage. So I'm just going to dump it right here. And you can see it just moves over, you know, like you'd move a file in your normal computer, right? Uh, but here's what's the really cool part about Cryptomator. So if you go back to the home folder, right? And remember the name, go away, Google, and you'll see that folder because that's my, where I saved it. But if you're using this with Dropbox or whatever, you can go there too. Um, and you'll see there's actually just all of these files here. And I'll try to explain what all, each of these files actually does. 
So first things first is your crypto meter master key, right? So if you're going to <laughs> that's why there's this RTF, another RTF document here. Okay. Uh, vault files. And this is what they say in all caps. Okay. Do not alter any files up in this directory or paste any files for encryption. That's what this folder is for. You know, the folder that you mounted when you opened it in crypto meter, right? You want to keep this folder and this is where you actually store anything. Do not put anything in this folder. It's actually really finicky. Um, but if you're going to do anything in this folder, the one stuff you're going to want to save is you want to save the D folder that you see right here, this one letter folder. You also want to save masterkey.cryptomator and vault.cryptomator. Save these folders, okay? They're incredibly important because these are actually what facilitate the decryption of your files. And they're nice enough to actually apply a little link here. Although, Cryptomator, I'm going to dock points here. Uh, you need to make this an HTTPS link. I'm going to dock you, uh, I'm going to dock you 0 0.2 points for that. Uh, this should ideally be, uh, in HTTPS, HTTPS, you know, for maximum security sake, but whatever. Here we are on docs.cryptomator and you can actually use this to actually read about, uh, about how to set up cryptomator if you get stuck. If there's any threat, any, you know, any, any of like their threat modeling and how, how their program works. It's actually really cool. Um, but I'm going to hop back here for a moment, right? So you're probably wondering, well, you uploaded this picture of the caveman, but where did it go? So if you go to the D drive here, you'll actually see there's a bunch of like random folders and you'll see that these folders contain lots of like garbled, like nonsense, and you can't actually read any of it, right? Um, and you're probably like, wait, why are there four folders? I thought you only put this one file here, right? Well, remember earlier when I deleted that uh, RTF document that originally came in here? Uh, in Linux, and if you're using Mac, for example, right, you're going to get this big folder, which actually stores all of your trash items. And you're like, well, there's only one item here, the picture of the caveman. But when you open the trash folder, there's actually the trash folder itself. And then there's this info file here. And then there's the file here. So there's actually four different files that need to be actually marked here. And this is actually what Cryptomator uses to keep place of each one. So watch what happens when I delete this file. So when I delete this file here, right? It'll take a moment. But what will happen is now when you open, uh, that one's the image right there, right? So this, you can actually figure out what it is based on just looking at it, right? So this is a, you'll see it has a, a C9R extension and this one can't be read. I can, you know, when I double click, nothing opens when I open it. But you'll notice that it's in a really similar, it's an awfully similar size to the caveman picture. That's really interesting. It has one, you know, 1 1.9 megabytes. But then when you go over here, you'll now notice, remember those folders, how those folders are filled earlier? They're now just empty, right? Because I deleted the I deleted that trash folder. And this is actually how Cryptometer uh, encrypts all of your files, but encrypts them in such a way that you can actually easily recover them. So why don't we go through why don't we go through that now, right? So when you're done encrypting all of your files, what you want to do is you want to click on the lock button. So click on the lock button, and then you'll notice that it's now locked. So I actually can't access that caveman picture anymore. So I'll click unlock and then it's going to prompt me for my password and I'm going to type in my super secret P starting password, click unlock, and then you can click on reveal drive again, right? And then this is where you can go and access all of your files. So here I am uh, with my Google account. This is my Google Drive folder. I never upload anything to my Google Drive, but uh, that's about to change. So here I have the folder, which just says, go away, Google, right? And I'm just going to copy all of this over. I can drop. Certainly gonna take its sweet time. It's only actually only two megabytes because you know it's just that picture. Uh, you can see it's done. And lo and behold, I have all of my files here nice and safe. And Google uh can merely look at them, right? You can actually, you know, you can actually test this, right? You want to go and double click on some of the files here, and uh I can't actually open any of them. You can download them individually. Um, you're probably wondering, well, why does Cryptomator choose to encrypt files this way? What's the reasoning behind this, right? And it's because a lot of like a lot of encryption software, right? When they upload your when the, a lot of encryption software, when they encrypt your files, you know, like there's a lot of big programs out there that do this. They actually just make like this one massive file, and you just dump all of your files inside that big file. So you have like a 15 gig like you know the max storage of google drive is 15 gigabytes right so if you have like a big like 14 gigabyte file you just shovel all of your files in that but what if you want to just like you know edit one file because that one file 
is like, you know, a Word document. You're trying to edit something. You want it to like, you know, you just want to make a tiny little change. Well, you have to, good luck trying to upload that 14 gigabyte file and having to do all of it all over again. And that's why CryptoMator exists, because each file is independent. A lot of these cloud services, I know this is true with Google Drive. I know it also works with um, OneDrive and uh, Mega, right? Uh, with OneDrive and with Mega. Um, what they do is they actually uh, they actually scan each of your files. So if the file is the same on their end, they'll actually they'll like com uh, you know they compare hashes of the files so that when they up we upload the file and if by looking at the hashes they'll be like oh is this file the same as you know as this file and if the answer is yes then they'll just stop the, the upload because it's a waste of their bandwidth it's a waste of your bandwidth they do it to be good stewards of your bandwidth. And when you upload uh, files uh, here, uh, and it, you know there's a, made a change that's made here, it actually puts it back in a way that preserves uh, preserves the information, and it also uh, is individually done so to preserve bandwidth and ma reduce the amount of time you've spent uploading files to drives. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. Like I uploaded um, a crummy picture of this caveman. And that's just this file right here. And it's all the same thing. The difference is it's just done in such a way that the file is completely inaccessible. But all of this, this is CryptoMator Nutshell. You know how to, you know, drag files over to upload them to Google Drive. Uh, you know how to, uh, you know, you can encrypt any file of your cho of your choosing. And it really, it really is that. And all of this really is that easy. Leave a like on this video if you like robots. The robots that ban you and the robots that encrypt all of your stuff. Catch you all later. Normal uploads are going to come back next week, I promise. I know this is a little, little more off the cuff than usual. And hope to see you then. Have a great rest of your week.